What's up, everybody? It's me, Chris. Here to give my afterthoughts on a uh, Vladimir Klitschko versus Ruslan Chagayev and John Pascal versus Adrian Diakonu, which happened last night. All right, uh, Klitschko Chagayev just ended a little while ago. Vladimir wins by TKO nine. Referee stops the fight or weighs off the contest after the ninth round. Says that you know Chagayev is no longer going to be able to compete. Basically, was delaying the inevitable. At the end of the eighth round, Klitschko is really teeing off on Chagayev. Just unloading on him in the corner and against the ropes. Plus, Chigayev had a big bad cut over his left eye that uh, Klitschko had, um, you know, caused on the in the prior round, I believe, with the punch. So Chigayev pretty much had nothing left, and it was a one-sided fight throughout. It was uh, pretty reminiscent of most of Klitsch Vladimir's recent fights. Very one-sided, you know. He just his opponents, you know, just aren't able to muster up any sort of offense, and this was the case in this fight. Vladimir just uses his jabs smartly, you know, keeps his opponents at distance, and lets his right hand go, you know, occasionally. I must say, he did let the right hand go and threw more one-two combinations in this fight than he has in prior fights. So I was glad to see that. I said in my uh, pre-fight video that if he lets his hands go more often, you know, he'd have more exciting fights and also be more effective, and that proved to be the case here. Um, Chikaya really was never into the fight. The best punch he landed, as a matter of fact, was... Um, in the seventh round, but it was after the bell had rung, so Klitschko pretty much didn't even have his guard up. So, you know, that was pretty much the only effective punch uh, Chigayev landed. Um, you know, props to Vladimir, very one-sided uh, victory, like I, as I said. But throughout the fight, the whole time I was thinking was, uh, damn, I I wish that uh, David Hay hadn't got injured because I'd much rather have seen that that fight. You know, win or lose. I just think David Hay would have made a more um, exciting fight because he would have took more chances, you know, you know, which may be to his detriment, but um, it just would have been a more exciting fight in my opinion. Um, I assume that that would probably be Klitschko's next fight, Vladimir's. I'm not for sure, but you know, Vladimir seemed to get through this fight unscathed, and I know uh, Hay said he'd be ready pretty soon, you know, for whatever his injury was or whatnot, so. Hopefully that fight can be rescheduled pretty quickly in the next couple of months or so. I know a lot of fans were looking forward to it, myself included, which is something uh, I haven't been in a heavyweight championship fight in a while. So hopefully that fight will be made, you know. But uh, as for this fight, you know, another impressive performance by Vladimir Klitschko. Not the most exciting to myself personally, but you know Klitschko got the win, and uh, that's what that's what that, you know that's what matters at the end of the day. Um, moving on to last night's light heavyweight title fight between uh, the champion uh, Adrian Diakonu and the challenger Jean Pascal. Now this was a very exciting fight. If you didn't get a chance to see it, it was on the Versus Network. Um, be sure and try to check it out. Versus always replays their fights over and over, so you can probably catch it on there. Anyways, uh, Diakonu was the champ. I said in my pre-fight video, that I or my pre-fight prediction, that I thought this would be a good fight, but I thought that the crowd would add to it because um, both fighters are fighting out of Montreal, Quebec. And that's where the fight was being held. And that proved to be the case. Diakonu was obviously the the crowd favorite. Um, you could tell during the introductions. And the ring walk. But both fans had their, uh, both fighters had their fair share of fans. And the fans were really electric and really excited throughout the fight. And the fighters gave them a reason to be. This was a really good fight. You know, a really um, exciting fight. Pascal was definitely the faster fighter as I uh, thought he would be. Diakonu, they said he was a fan of Mike Tyson and he employs a certain similar style. Granted, he doesn't have the speed and power of a, uh, Mike Tyson, you know, who does, right? But um, Pascal, whenever he fought and used like a jab and, you know, stay on the outside, he was definitely more successful. You know, he just is the much better boxer, technically, and was able to use his speed and his jab much to his advantage early on and throughout the fight. But whenever he would like let, whenever Diakonu would get inside, the fight would favor him. Or whenever Diakonu was able to trap Pascal against the ropes, he was able to kind of tee off. But however, Pascal was able to hold his own at uh, more than a few occasions when they did mix it up. So it wasn't like whenever Diakonu got inside, it was one-sided because that wasn't the case. Anyways, um, fight was going pretty much, you know, Pascal was controlling it for the most part, but Diakonu was having his moments as well. He definitely was the bigger puncher. And it seemed like he was able to, you know, catch uh, Pascal clean a couple times. Pascal doesn't have the best defense. He uh, fights a lot with his hands down. You can tell uh, guys like him and Andre Ward, both um, 
you probably came up watching Roy Jones. They have very similar styles to his. You know, the way they fight with their hands down. They're not the best defensive fighters, but they have enough speed that they're able to get away with it, with their defensive deficiencies, at least up to this point. Um, anyways, moving on to round five. Uh, Pascal was able to knock Diakonu down, caught him with the shot. Diakonu was a little bit more off balance than actually hurt. I believe, I, I mean, he was hurt, but he wasn't hurt real bad. Um, he got up, Pascal jumped all over him. Diakonu went down again. Still hard to tell even on the replays whether it was a knockdown or he tripped up on his own feet. But um, once again, Pascal went after him. But uh, then Diakonu caught Pascal with a right hand on the head, hurt him. Um, Pascal stayed up, but he was definitely hurt. Um, ended up having to clinch up, you know, hold on for the rest of the round. Really exciting round. Probably one of the best rounds of the year. It was one of those rounds where it would have been a 10-8 round for Pascal based on the knockdown, but with uh, Giacomo able to hurt him afterwards, I made it a 10-9 round for Pascal. Anyways, as the fight went on, Pascal was able to once again use his speed advantage and his jab, um, keep Giacomo on the outside for the most part. He did jump in a lot. He used a lot of good uh, body shots. He definitely uh, went to Giacomo's body very effectively throughout the fight. You know, it seemed to slow Giacomo down later on in the fight. Which is obviously to Pascal's, you know, uh, favor. And also, it took a little bit of steam off Diakonu's punches, I believe. So, they did get inside and trade quite a bit. Um, Pascal was able to land a lot of uh, counter left hands, which ended up um, causing a pretty good uh, bump on, uh, or, or, you know, just swelling on Diakonu's uh, left cheek, I believe it was, left or right cheek at the by the end of the fight. I don't know if he had a fracture in there or not, but he definitely had some damage there from a. Uh, Pascal's left, counter left, so he was definitely landing his own shots as well, some solid shots as well. The exciting thing about this fight was that, although Pascal was clearly winning rounds in my opinion, for the most most of the rounds, um, Giacchino always seemed to have the power to threaten him, and Pascal would give him plenty of opportunities to get caught, where he would get kind of reckless, where he would want to trade inside, you know, even though it may not have been his best interest, the fact that he had so much faster hands, Pascal that is, he was still able to get the better but um, it still made him vulnerable at times to getting caught and getting possibly knocked down or knocked out. However, it just wasn't meant to be. Um, late in the fight, Diakonu's uh, corner were telling him he needed a knockout um, to win. It was kind of obvious. He was going for it, but um, Pascal just continued to use his speed and his jab and continued to work to the body and, you know, let his hands loose when it was smart and then stay on the outside when it was smart too as well. And the fight went to a decision and, you know, I was... Holding my breath because you never know what the decisions, but uh, John Pascal gets the decision deservedly so, deservedly so, and he's the new WBC light heavyweight champion of the world. Um, looking for, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a rematch of this fight because uh, it's definitely did big business up there in Canada, and I'm sure the fans would like to see a rematch as well because it was a competitive fight, somewhat close. Um, I'd pick Pascal to win a rematch as well, but I wouldn't mind seeing a rematch. Um, if not, you know, there's plenty of names in the division. Pascal could fight, uh, you know, uh, Andre Ward. Andre Durrell, Alan Green, um, if he moves up, and uh, obviously Chad Dawson. So, you know, a lot of good young guys up in that light heavyweight division right now. Same with the super middleweight. So, looking forward to see what's next for Pascal. Anyways, that's it for now, y'all. Till next time, I'm out of here. Bye.